The final talk today will be delivered by Paul Mahoney, who is the National Coordinator Historic Heritage at the Department of Conservation in New Zealand. The topic of Mr. Mahoney's talk is Forest Railways of Asia Pacific Region and Industrial Heritage. The coming up speech will be given by Paul Mahoney, National Coordinator Historic Heritage, Department of Conservation, New Zealand. The topic is Forest Railways of the Asia Pacific Region and Industrial Heritage. Hello, this is Paul Marty from New Zealand presenting Forest Railways of the Asia Pacific Region. This is an interesting part of the industrial heritage of our region. I hope to assist you to evaluate this heritage. I identify three important forest railways in the region and others may yet be found. I also identify some key management challenges for this heritage. The principal role of forest railways was to transport logs from harvest areas to sawmills. They are a key element in the four-step industrial process for wood. One, growing forests. Two, harvesting trees, three, processing logs, and four, utilising wood. Forest railways are part of the second step, harvesting trees. These research questions can help identify and evaluate forest railway heritage. One, what was their historic extent? Two, what heritage survives today? Three, what is the heritage value? This paper gives an Asian Pacific Forest Railway Heritage Overview. They were widespread. Most Asia Pacific countries had forest railways. I present case study examples from nine countries and give overview information for each. These are the case study countries. As we go through, uh, one feature will, you will notice is the great variety in technology uptake across Asia Pacific. Ideas from all over the world. Three alternative forest railway technologies spread globally from the 1880s, from the USA, Europe and Britain. All three models had influence in Asia Pacific and they were often blended, adapted, or improved. Examples of forest railway technology are steam skidders, geared steam locomotives, and rail tractors, all specially designed for this industry. And from the 1920s, Russia, Japan, and China evolved national models. Taiwan is the first case study. The 72 kilometer long Alishan Forest Railway still operates in the Central Mountains. This forest railway is world class. It has replaced forestry with tourism. Taiwan overview data. Six major forest railways once existed. Today, all are gone except the Alishan main line remains operational. It is potential world heritage. Japan case study, the Ambo Forest Railway on Yakushima Island, 26 kilometers long, is operational. Japan overview data, Japan developed forest railways from the 1880s Meiji era to harvest the remaining forest. Today, all are gone except the 26 kilometer Amba Railway, which is high value heritage. Tourists would love to ride this railway. China. This has the potential for notable forest railway heritage, but the question is what survives? Overview data. China had extensive modern forest railways dating from the 1920s. Today, it's likely all are closed and it's uncertain how much of this heritage survives in China. 
possibly the last forest railway closed in 2014. North Korea had a large scale forest railways and forested areas in the north. What survives? We don't know. Overview data. Forest railways were established by Japan from the 1910s and built new into the 1960s. Today, it is uncertain how much of this heritage survives in North Korea. Philippines case study. The Insular Lumber Company in 1974. This was largely USA technology. It operated from 1907 to 1975, supplying a sawmill at Barangay Fabrica on Negros Island. Overview data for the Philippines. Little is known of the historic extent of forest railways in the Philippines. Today, all are closed and it seems unlikely that any of this heritage survives. Malaysia case study. This is a forest railway near Banting in 1976. This was fully British technology. Overview data for Malaysia. Little is known of the historic extent of forest railways in Malaysia. Today, all are closed, and it seems unlikely that any of this heritage survives. Indonesia case study. Sipu Forest Railway in 2008. It was fully European technology. Logging operations ran from 1915 to 1998. The network extent was 300 kilometres. 30 kilometres remains operational now. Indonesia overview data. Little is known of the extent of forest railways here. Today, all are closed, but at least part of the Jipu Forest Railway survives for tourists. Australia case study. Australia has some of the world's strongest and most durable timber. The Huon Timber Company, shown here, blended British and USA technology. Australia overview data. Forest railways were widespread, with notably extensive systems in Western Australia. The last closed in 1964. None survive intact. Examples of skidders and locos do survive. New Zealand case study. We favoured locally designed and built equipment. This gave wonderful diversity. Over 600 forest railways once operated, and I am the author of a book on these. New Zealand overview data. Forest railways were widespread. The last closed in 1974. None survive intact. But examples of skidders and locos survive and operate. Our state railway, Kiwi Rail, has two modern mainline forest railways built in the 1950s. This is a modern New Zealand forest railway. Uh, we export these logs. Heritage challenges today. Here are the closing dates of the last forest railway in each case study country. The list highlights three countries where confirmed forest railway heritage survives, Taiwan, Japan, and Indonesia. More work is required on what survives in China. Forest railways existed in at least nine other Asia Pacific countries. Does forest railway heritage survive today? There are three key questions. What was the historic extent of forest railways in your country? What heritage survives today? And what is the heritage value? To assess heritage value, a key factor is to know the wider context. There are three 
critical wider context factors. One is global contextual information. Two, the industrial role played by forest railways. Three, the distinctive value attributes. All of this context is available uh, in my Tiki technical papers since 2014. Global overview context. Forest railways were once widely used by the forest industry globally in at least 86 countries on all continents. The era of most intensive use was 1870 to 1970. The last few examples survive in 2020. Historically, their principal role was to transport logs from harvesting areas to sawmills. Industrial role context. Forest railway technology advanced the large-scale industrialization of the forest industry. Over time, they developed into a specialized type of railway technology. Their primary attributes are to be found in mountain forest settings that pose the greatest challenge. Their evaluation includes assessing the primary attributes that made forest railways distinctive and successful. Primary value attributes. The first two attributes in this table are forest railway primary attributes. The other four attributes reflect the World Heritage System and they work well for national sites as well. In an evaluation of forest railway heritage, these attributes can be scored. World heritage potential of forest railways based on my project work since 2012. Well, first there's Ali San and Taiwan scores highest in the world on value attributes using a scientific process. Possibly there's an alternative Serial World Heritage nomination of four sites, Ali San in Taiwan, Cass in the USA, Vizu Desu in Romania and Ambo in Japan. Other sites in Asia Pacific could be national heritage. Challenges to achieve sustainable heritage management of forest railways. One. Finding an adaptive reuse model. The railway must generate core income plus give visitors uh, a great heritage experience. Two, climate change impacts. Uh, note Ali San's experience with typhoon damage. Three, COVID impacts, the loss of international travel and the cruise ship market. Four, maintaining authenticity and skills. Uh, the Puffing Billy Railway in Australia is a successful example. To me, one of the best ways uh, to uh, address these challenges is to have good communication with other heritage railway operators and around the world and to pool your ideas. To conclude, most Asia-Pacific countries once had forest railways. The conclusions from this presentation are that the Ali San Railway in Taiwan is outstanding in a global context. The Amba Railway in Japan is notable in a global context. Other notable railways may exist in Indonesia and China. They need to be assessed. A written version of this presentation is available and for specific forest railway projects, I'd be pleased to help support them with uh, advice. So thank you for your attention and interest. It's uh, Paul Marnie from New Zealand.